to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Christians often sing the beautiful song, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. How true that is and what a motivating factor for the child of God going home to be with God ought to be. Today we're talking about the way home in our lesson. We're so glad that you joined us and we encourage you to stay tuned as we're going to think about this powerful idea of home, going home to be with Almighty God. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. Jesus promised us in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, that this world is not our home. We are just passing through here on a temporary journey. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many dwellings. Were it not so, I would have told you. Jesus teaches us that we're just pilgrims. We're just sojourners on a temporary journey here, headed home. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, the Apostle Paul said, We know that if our earthly tent, this house is destroyed, we have a building from God not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This tent is going to be destroyed. The Bible teaches that, that our life is but a, a vapor here for a little while, then it vanishes away. James 4, 14. Scripture says that you've got, seven, if you're lucky, 70, maybe 80 years on this earth. And so we're on a, a temporary journey. Sojourners and pilgrims. Our true citizenship is in heaven, our home. And my friend, that's where Jesus is. That's where he's waiting to usher us in. But what do we have to do? What do we have to do to get home? I want us to think about the way home today to make sure that every child of God is able to walk through that pearly gate to hear the words of Jesus as he ushers us in, well done, good and faithful servant. 
And my friend, realize that for us to go home, when death comes, and it will, there are only two options. The Bible teaches in Hebrews 9 verse 27 that it is appointed to man once to die, and then the judgment. And our Lord Jesus said in Matthew 25 verse 46, the righteous will go away into eternal life, the unrighteous into eternal condemnation. We're all going that way. The road splits and divides out. Heaven on one side, hell on the other. What's the way home? How do I make sure that I get home to be with God? Let me mention these things that I think will help each of us in our journey home today. To go home, to go home to heaven, you've got to want it and you've got to desire it more than anything else. If you don't want it, if you kind of want it, if you half-hearted want it, if you like the idea of it, but that won't work. You've got to want to go to heaven. You've got a desire to go home more than anything else. Going to heaven just doesn't happen by accident. You just don't kind of slip up one day and get on the right path and by happenstance get there. It's not the way it works. I want you to think about some exa examples in the Bible of people who more than anything in the world desired to go to heaven. I want you to think about Abraham. Abraham and his wife Sarah sacrificed so much to go to heaven. Listen to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. The Bible says of Abraham, For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Where was Abraham's gaze focused? What was his intent and desire? Where was he looking? He looked for that heavenly city. Think about David. 2 Samuel 12, you've got a pretty sad scene. After the problems with Bathsheba, David's young son dies. And listen to what David says. He says, but now he's dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? And then David says this, I shall go to him. He shall not return to me. What is David saying in all that? The young son who passed away, David made it his intent his desire, and his focus to go to God to be with him. Think about where his mindset was. And then think about Paul. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 24, Paul says, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He says, I'm kind of in between a rock and a hard place. To stay here is more needful for you. But he said, here's what I really want. I desire, listen to these words. This is what we're talking about. Paul said, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Friend, if you want to go home, you've got to want it. You've got to want it more than anything else. You've got to want it more than fulfilling the desires of the flesh. You've got to want it more than you want money and power and pride. You've got to want it when it doesn't always come easy. And you've got to want it when the enemy every day is working to oppose that and to get you off track. You've got to desire it and want it and seek it first every day. Secondly, on our journey home, to get home, the way home means you've got to decide to go there. Not only do you have to want it, you've got to make a, a decision. See, my friend, life is filled with decisions every day. You've got to make the decision every day to choose the right path and to go home. Joshua 24, verse 15, Joshua said to the people of Israel, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we've made that decision. We're going to serve the Lord. Well, let's be honest today. You can't have everything. You can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't live for the world and live for God. You can't have every passion and every desire and, and fulfill every impulse. You can't have everything. You've got to decide what's important. You've got to make a decision every day to follow Jesus Christ. And friend, listen carefully. A decision not to go to heaven 
and not to obey God, by default, is a decision to disobey God and to be lost. Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. But to those who don't obey him, friend, the decision is to go down the wrong path. But the good news is this. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are all pleading with us. They're all encouraging us. They're, they're giving us help to make the right decision every day to go home. Listen to these Bible verses. In Romans chapter 10, verse 21, God says, But to Israel God says, All day long I stretch forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. What's the image of stretching forth your hand? If I put my hand out, that's a symbol of helping you, right? God, every day, all day long, was stretching out his hand trying to help Israel. He wanted them to be saved and did everything to help them. In fact, the Bible teaches God doesn't want anybody to be lost. Is hell a real place? Is being lost a possibility? Is it one of the two options? Definitely. But it's not what God wants. Listen to 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering toward us. Why? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The God of heaven wants you to walk down the right path. He's afforded us that opportunity. And listen to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 verse 27. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, come, and let him that is thirsty come. Whosoever will, let him take freely of the water of life. My friend, God's not going to force you, although he wants you to make the right decision. And we want you to make the right decision. That decision is a personal decision. Nobody can decide for you. They can't live for you. They can't prepare for you. They can't die for you. They can't spend eternity for you. It's a personal decision. You've got to make it, and you've got to make it while you've got time and opportunity. Let me illustrate. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 12. We have the story of the bridegroom, and the bridegroom's coming, and there's these ten virgins, and five of those virgins went ahead of time, got their oil in their lamp. They were ready. They were dressed. They were prepared. When the bridegroom came, he went with them. It was a great time of feasting and rejoicing. But five of those virgins were foolish. They didn't think ahead. They didn't plan. They didn't prepare. They didn't make good decisions. And, and when the bridegroom came, they weren't ready. And they went to buy oil and trim their lamp and do all that. And the door was shut forevermore. They weren't able to enjoy that time of rejoicing. What's the whole point of that? It's a personal decision. Now is the time and opportunity to get ready. You can't wait till it happens. You can't wait till the Lord comes or till the last second on the time o'clock ticks and then decide to get ready. It's a personal decision that you've got to make while you've got time and while you've got opportunity. And friend, realize this. As it relates to the way home, it's really simple. There is one, there is but one way to Almighty God. Very simple. John 14, 6. As Jesus talked about home, right? In the context, Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you can come also. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to come back and receive you to myself. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't that way, I would have told you. And Thomas said, um, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do, can we know the way? Here's what Jesus said. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You see, my friend, Christ, the one and only way to God, has prepared a path that every person can go down. This idea of one is unique. Ephesians 4 verse 5 says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The, the scripture teaches that there is one saving message from God. Jude verse 3, 
2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, known as the gospel of Christ, which saves, Romans 1, 16. There is but one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus himself. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. There's one rule of life, the Christian rule to follow, Philippians 3, 16. And my friend, there's one body that we have to be in, that Jesus is coming back to receive the kingdom to himself. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 26. And so if a person's going to find the way home, please hear me well. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But be warned, that way is narrow. That is not a broad road that everybody's walking down. You got to make a decision to go down that path, and it's a, a narrow path. Look in Matthew chapter 7 at what the Bible here says, verses 13 and 14. Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate. Well, why? For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and some versions say difficult, the wording here is more restricted, is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. The way is narrow. Jesus clearly taught that. Here's the, here's the image in your mind, okay? You've got a, you've got a, a large six-lane highway that everybody's going down. It's wide. Everybody's going down it. Jesus said, that's not the way that leads to eternal life. The way is narrow. It's more restricted. There are do's and don'ts. There are th ways I've got to live. There are certain things I can't partake in. There are choices that I can't make. But all of those are better for me anyway. The path and the way itself is better. Psalm 1 verse 1, happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. It's the best path you can choose. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. It is the abundant life. And friend, please understand, one way is not as good as another. Proverbs 14, 12 says this, there's a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof is the way of death. Every path won't get you there. One path's not as good as the other. Don't get on that broad way where everybody's doing what they want to do and following their own heart's desire. Get on the way that Jesus set, the one way. There's one road that leads home, and Christ is that way. Friend, listen very carefully. The one way home, as we said, is very, very simple. Isaiah 35 verse 8 says, And a highway will be there, and a way it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass on it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, though fools shall not err therein. It's, it's the highway of holiness. It's simple. What does it mean to get on the right way? Well, friend, you've got to make a decision that life's no longer going to be about you. It's not going to be about what I want not going to be about my desires. I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm going to make a decision to deny self. If any man desires to come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself. I'm going to, I'm going to make that decision that I'm no longer going to live a life that is filled with selfish, foolish, hurtful decisions anymore. I'm going to live for something higher than that. I'm going to make a decision to give up on self. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 5, I'm going to make a decision that it's no longer about what I want. It's about what God wants and how God wants me to live. I'm going to put off the old man with all its lust and passions and desires that was harmful anyway. Ephesians 4 verse 22 through 24, I want to forsake all to follow Jesus Christ. Matthew 19, verse 27. I want to get into Christ the way Christ tells me to. The way is simple in that when I deny self and I really give myself first to God, then I'm going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ the way the Bible tells me to. Galatians 3, 27 says this. As many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Romans 6, verses 3 through 4, we're buried with Christ in baptism, wherein we access his death and access his death, and we arise out of that to walk in newness of life. Friend, that's got to be preceded, of course, by faith 
in repentance and confession, but you can't get into Christ without obeying the gospel. And let me tell you why it's important. Let me share with you why it's such a good thing to be in Christ, who is the right way. In Christ, we have every spiritual blessing you could ever imagine. All spiritual blessings are ours in Christ Jesus. Forgiveness of all past sin. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things that will have passed away. Behold, all has become new. The love of God is in our hearts and lives. We're living a life that's different from the world. We now have a life with purpose and meaning to, to serve God and do good unto others. In Christ, we want to abide in Him. John 15, verse 6, we want to continue to add to our faith and grow as a Christian every day. We don't walk according to the flesh anymore. We walk according to the Spirit's teaching. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And we've got to persevere. Jesus said, he who perseveres to the end will be saved. And then once I'm in Christ, friend, I've got to make it my determined decision to go on toward heaven. This is our ultimate destination in our journey. I want you to listen to the words and notice the words of Colossians chapter 3. I want you to see the end result of a life that leads to heaven. Notice these words beginning in verse number 1. Paul says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Why? For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, you also will appear with him in glory. Friend, that, that beautiful journey toward heaven itself. It's something that every child of God needs. And so here's what we're asking you to think about today. Your life right now and my life right now, are we making that determined effort? Is your life headed home? Are we living in such a way that heaven will be the end result of our life? Friend, please understand there are so many things that try to keep us from staying on that path. The devil is an active adversary who is constantly on the prowl. Every one of us here today has challenges and temptations that appeal uniquely to us that are trying to pull us off that path. Rest assured, God wants to help you on your journey to heaven but ultimately, I've got to make that decision. Friend, have you made the decision more than anything else in all the world? I want to go to heaven. Don't you one day want to hear the Lord Jesus Christ say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. If you're not a child of God, friend, we are begging you today to put on the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. We talked a little bit about it, but let me, let me illustrate how a person gets into Jesus Christ, who is the way. Throughout the book of Acts, when people are presented with the gospel and encouraged to get in the right way, how did they do that? When Acts chapter 2, when the, for the very first time, the gospel is preached and they cry out, men and brethren, what shall we do? They're told to repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 3, verse 19. When they again want to know what to do to please God, Peter said, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 18, verse 8. Many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. As we study the cases of conversion in the book of Acts, you find that people heard the message about Jesus who is the way. They, they, they put their confidence in the evidence. They put their faith in the evidence and they believed that only he could save and they gave their life fully to him. They were willing to turn from a life of sin, repent and be converted. And like the Ethiopian eunuch, they confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts 8, verse 36 and 37. And then, my friend, as you study the accounts of conversion about how to get into Jesus, who is the way, in the book of Acts, 
you will find they were baptized into Christ for the salvation of their soul and for their sins to be forgiven. Let me illustrate from one of the more uh, common examples that we find in the New Testament, a great case of conversion. Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 9, he's confronted on the road to Damascus by the Lord Jesus. He recognizes he's Lord. He's willing to submit to him. Lord, what would you have me to do? And Jesus tells him, you go in the city, it'll be told you what you must do. As Paul recounts his own conversion, in Acts twenty two sixteen, he says this, Ananias came to Saul and he said, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. A friend, I know as well as you do that the blood of Jesus Christ saves. There's no doubt about that. Without the shedding of blood, no forgiveness of sins, Hebrews 9, 22. But the Bible also teaches we're washed in his blood. Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6, and we contact the blood and death of Jesus when we are buried with Christ into baptism. And so, my friend, we appeal, you, appeal to you today. Make sure you're on the way home. Is your life, is my life, is our life being lived in such a way that we're going to go do our best to go to heaven? Is there anything in your life that you need to remove, get out of the way so that you can serve God and seek his kingdom first? If you're not a Christian, we beg you today to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. If as a child of God, you need to make changes to make sure you go home, make those changes. And our encouragement today is, let's live in such a way that one day we'll hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Join us next time as we study more from God's divine word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.